Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. This is part of our Keys to the Guitar Shop series that we shoot here at Sky Music in Melbourne, Australia. And due to the lockdown, Rick is unable to be a part of this video today, unfortunately. So it'll just be me and I'll be talking a little bit about our experience playing different amps and guitars in this particular series. So a massive thank you to Sky Music for letting us do this. We're not sponsored or paid to make the videos there. We just go down and shoot and test whatever we like in the store. It's a whole lot of fun. I hope you like this particular series. In today's video though, I'm gonna feature the Orange Tremlord 30, which is a combo amplifier from Orange. While Orange amplifiers have never been on my radar, I get a lot of questions about them. So I thought I'd sum up my experience playing the Orange Tremlord 30 in a live situation. And this particular amplifier should tick a lot of boxes for what I like being mostly a blues and sort of classic rock kind of player. So for me, this sort of should make more sense than it did. I didn't actually enjoy it that much, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in context to another amplifier later and then show you the difference. So the Tremlord 30 is basically a 1950s guitar amplifier with a valve tremolo. So it's got that going for it, which is actually really musical. Now, while this amplifier has a quartet of EL84 power tubes, what it doesn't have is a typical EL84 kind of brightness to it has a very different sound and it breaks up extremely early. So if you're looking for a very chimey EL84 amp, this wouldn't be the choice. Additionally, this amplifier also has a power attenuator where you can either run it at full 30 watts, 15 watts, two or one watt. And you would think, how loud can it be at one watt? One watt on an amplifier that's full valve still has a little bit of kick to it. And I made a point of that with my Marshall DSL-C1 amplifier, testing that in a live mix. It was pretty loud considering how small of an amp it is. Now, when it comes to the cabinet size, this amplifier is roughly the same size as a Vox AC15. But one of the biggest differences is you can see the speaker straight on the back of the amplifier. So it has a semi-open back cab. Let's take a listen. Let's talk a little bit about the playing experience when it came to the Orange Tremlord 30. Now, this would definitely have an audience, but it's probably not aimed at someone like myself who wants great blues tones or great sort of rock tones, which is strange because I thought that was Orange's bag. But this particular amp, even with the master volume, first and foremost cranked up basically all the way up. It just didn't cut the room whatsoever. That was my first complaint about it. My second complaint is I had a selection of four overdrive pedals on the floor. No matter what I clicked in to try to give it more cut and presence in the room, it just didn't do it. So for me, this is a bit of a, bit of a downer. Now, usually when I click a clon pedal in, for example, I hear that frequency of the clon coming out of the amplifier, giving me an upper mids bump and treble sort of boost as well. I wasn't getting it out of this amp. It just got more saturated and compressed and it had no bloom of sound once I kicked in those effects. So. For me personally, I would take something like a Marshall DSL-20 over this any day of the week. And after playing it back to back, the Marshall just wiped the floor with this particular amplifier. Now, 
There's probably an audience for this, but if you know the tones that I like and you watch the other videos in this series, I've had no problems getting great tones out of any of the gear I've tried. But this was actually pretty tough, and I don't know who I'd really recommend this to. I think if you're going to be playing clean, you'll get a kick out of this amplifier, or if you like the built-in tremolo, which is really cool also, but it just didn't seem to have enough volume, it didn't have enough presence in the mix, and it sounded far better in the recording that you heard than it did in the room. So overall, probably not my favorite amp I've ever tried, but if you're a fan of Orange Amps, you know, give this one a look. I would almost say... Maybe go up to the larger combo if you're going to be thinking about buying one of these because, yeah, I, I just couldn't use this in a live situation.